Okay, this is going to be about the FIO FD5. Um, I've actually had a lot of requests about doing this video. Um, and man, I, I gotta tell you, these things are... This is going to be a good video. Well, for me at least it is. Um, so this is the box that comes in. Uh, I, I like this box. You know, I always talk about packaging being crazy and not give you too much. Uh, I think this is a good example. This, it is a, a fairly big box, but it's got a magnetic lid. It's really good quality construction. All the stuff comes out, and I can use this box for something else, which is, these are keepers for sure. So, um, the headphones come in here. Of course, they're in the nice little heart shape. You always see that file stuff. This is the case. Um, after you open this up, there's a little box in here. There's a little box right here that has all this stuff in it, as well as a couple other things. Uh, there's all your tips. And you'll notice that there's different size openings on the tips. You can see that, if I bring this up there, you can see there's some that are really small and some that are really big. And that's an interesting part of these. Um, it's got a nice little piece of cloth in there, so it comes out easy. You don't have to mess around with that. I, this was in there like so. Yeah, I, I, really nice. Um, close that. Keep that there. So this is the case it comes with, which I really like this case. Not only does it work well, there's just something about it. You know, it reminds me of, you know, there was these, this store called The Gap, which is still around. And it sold all Levi stuff. And like everything in the freaking store was blue jean, right? At least back in the 90s when I used to go into it. And uh, as, a, as a younger person. And the everything there was always like leather and blue jeans. And that's what this case reminds me of. It's all like, I, it smells like real leather. So I'm guessing maybe it is partly at least real leather, but it, it definitely smells like leather. So it opens up like that. It's got a little magnetic kind of latch right there. Um, very secure. I, I like hard cases that protect like this. It's very soft felt line in here. I mean, it, it feels like a very well-made case. And then there's the IEMs and they've got this nice little feature, which I'll go over. I'll go over the IEMs in just a sec. I want to get some of this stuff out of the way. It's got these two little loops in there. If you can see that, let me see if I get the lighting so you can, let me if I get up close. Yeah, see there's two little loops. And the first time I saw that and I thought maybe that's for the accessories. But the first time I threw these in, I dropped them and they just fell right into those holes. I mean, they went, they went right in there as I was, I wound it up and put it in there. I was like, ah, perfect. Just to keep them from clacking together because stainless steel IEMs like this, a lot of times they bang around in the case and they get all scratched up. So, all right, well, let's move on. That's the case and the box. The case is nice. I really, really like the case. Uh, cable. And I love innovation and I love when companies really put thought into what they're doing and try to be innovative. And and when they can be innovative and also create like a real quality product, sound-wise, construction-wise, everything, I mean, I, that's, you know, when they kind of hit the mark. File really hit the mark on this. They knocked it out of the park as far as I'm concerned. I've listened to several other IEMs from them. I've got a review on the FH3s. They weren't really for me. I didn't really like them that much. They were okay. They just weren't, weren't my sound signature. Um, I said they were kind of veiled, I think it was. Um, the cable, sorry, I don't want to get off track. Uh, the cable, very nice. Really like this cable. Uh, MMCX, which I enjoy. I like MMCX. Doesn't tangle easy. It's, has a luxurious feel to it. Doesn't catch on anything. Has a really nice weave to it. Really nice end there. Split is nice. Has a little chin slider that actually works, which I like. Um, so let me, I use these a lot. I use these like every day now. This is, I love the Monarchs, but the Monarchs are so good. I have to measure how much I use them. I have to be careful because it makes me completely hate everything else so 
but these these are these are pretty special so um you can see the construction there inside of these little little pathways there's like little holes and then the outside of it's like acid etched so it has like a flat finish and then a nice stainless steel casing the red one i mean sorry the right one has a red anodized little insert there uh, i'll take this off there is the the end the sound nozzle and that's where the MMCX connector goes in. It's also red on there. So they're very small. Um, they have a nice weight to them. I mean, they they remind me of the tin T4s a little bit with that kind of like nice weight, you know, and they have these nice stainless case, um, cases. And there's your little uh, port there. Now, these little holes back here are ports as well. And I was reading on how they constructed this and why they did it the way they, they did. Um, so they designed this driver themselves, which I like. It's an in-house design on the driver that's in here. And there's some things they did with it to make it be able to move freely to better produce um, detail and separation and, and respond faster, be a faster driver um, for, you know, complicated uh, tracks, that kind of thing. So these little holes in, in here are, are like for pressure relief and so that that driver in there can move back and forth really easily without without creating that, you know, you can, if you, some IEMs that are dynamic driver, once you get them in your ear, if you get a good enough seal, uh, they can get this weird kind of like suction or pressure in your ear eardrum or ear cavity. And uh, um, it's it's not pleasant. So to relieve that, make sure it didn't happen, they they ported this both on the front and also they created these ports back here and also to make sure that driver was always free to move in there. Um, at least that's what it says in their literature, right? And that's what I'm going by. But what I like is they designed the driver, then they designed the case to work with the driver, right? Um, the cable was innovative as well. So. We'll get back to the IEMs here in just a second. This is one of those things I really like. So you'll see it comes with a 3.5 and a 2.5. And I've got the 4.4 in here because that's what I use. And the way this works is that you grab it and unscrew this piece. And it slides down a little bit. See, you can see that okay. And then you just give this a good tug. And it just pulls out and it's got uh, I don't know if you can see inside of this or not but it's got a it's got four little pins in there and those pins obviously line up with the pins on this there's a little slot on the side if you get these and you're gonna change this you, you, you want to be careful because there's a little slot on the side here I would try to pick the one you're gonna use and stick with it it, it like I said it's innovative and I really like it but I can see from looking in these hole in this hole here that these pins they're fairly thin, and because they're stiff and thin like that, I know that if you bend one, you might be able to bend it back, but it's probably going to crack it. So it'd be best to just not bend it at all. Um, the uh, there's a little slot on here. It's a little slot right in there, and there's a slot in there that matches it. So you find that and put it in that way, give a little push straight in. I can feel it locked in there and I just tighten this up. Now I've got a balanced 4.4 cable. Maybe you don't have 4.4 devices. Maybe you've got 2.5. Well, there's the 2.5. Um, and then there's also 3.3. So I thought that was super cool that they have this type of setup. I haven't seen any other cables like this and I, I, I really enjoy that. And everything feels very high quality. Um, Everything's well designed, well made. Then there's this strange little thing. And I, when I first saw it, I was like, what is that? So what this is, is it turns out, is a holder um, for sound nozzles. Because what they've done here, and I'll, I'll hold these up here together. You can see these are sound nozzles to swap out. And these are thinner, they're smaller. So what you do is you unscrew it off of here. I want to be careful with this. I... And so those unscrew off of there. Do the sound nozzle on here. 
also, um, look at that so you can see it unscrews. And there is a little washer on there. You want to be careful not to lose that. And that's what that looks like there. And then you just screw this, this sound nozzle on. And as you can see, this sound nozzle is um, quite a bit smaller than the other one. So what that means is, if you can see that really well, but that's why I was showing you earlier the tips and to take notice that there's small ones and big ones. The smaller ones are for this tube and the bigger ones for the other tube. Um, I like the big tube. I don't like to block the sound nozzle at all. So typically a smaller sound tube or blocking or, or just a tip with a smaller uh, opening will artificially increase the bass is what will happen. And it can do other things with the frequencies as well. I, I didn't like the thinner tube. It was okay. It just didn't do anything for me. I really liked this one. This one is, was it for me. And I used a tip that was really big so that it didn't, it didn't block anything coming out of that sound tube. That's the way I always like to do it. It just, I want it to, I want to hear it the way it's supposed to sound. So um, that's the way I've got it. But this is a very cool little feature, I think, here. Uh, and I did listen to it. I just, you know, it wasn't, wasn't for me. The, comes with a little brush for cleaning. And this little yellow thing is to um, grip these and unscrew them. I found that I could just do it with my fingers just fine. There was no, no issue with that. So the IEMs, and how do they sound? They sound excellent. They sound fantastic. I, I really am in love with these things. So I think these things were like, uh, let me look, look it up real quick. These things were $319.99 on Linsole. Um, I think they're worth every penny. I think these sound as good as the Fearless Tequila, which is $399. Um, I think these sound, well, these sound as good, almost as good as the S8Z. S8Z has a little bit different sound quality to it. You know, when I say sound is good, when I say sound is good, it's all relative, right? Because <clears throat> it's not that those other ones sound bad. And, and you know, it's, it's really my subjective listening to these that, that in my ears I like the way they sound better it, with my line library and whatnot and I listen to a lot of stuff I listen to classical and rock and and pop and um you know a, a lot of different stuff a lot of jazz I like jazz a lot um you know one more thing about the design these things have a real nice weight to them and they get really warm in your in your hands and I noticed when I took them out of my ear when I, when I first put them in they were kind of cold because of the steel the stainless steel, but when I took them out, they were really warm. So right away they get to your body temperature and they become very, very comfortable. I, I want to say these are like some of the most comfortable IEMs that I have. Um, right up there with the Urban Funds. The Urban Funds are super comfortable ear uh, earpieces and, and these are like that. Um, I think these are way more beautiful and the cable is, is really nice. Um, sound quality, um, treble, very good, very good detail very good um, separation and timbre in, in the treble area. Mids, very smooth, um, fast. I guess you'd say, I, I want to use words that make sense, right? So when I say fast, I mean it transitions very quickly. Um, the bass, very good. The timbre in the bass was excellent. The... Um, the timbre in the bass was was excellent. Um, the there was no bleed off, which is something I don't like, or something you hear in some cheaper IEMs, or even IEMs that just aren't design, designed right. And a lot of times with dynamic drivers, you can get this bleed off, right? Where, okay, had a power outage, so back with a new battery. Um, I was talking about the bass. I put it on this red cloth. It's a little easier to see, I think. Um, Bass on these, um, the bass has a nice sharpness to it, or I guess some people would call it speed, but it's able to, the, there's like a shelf on it. So basically, um, 
the bass doesn't do this kind of slow rolling fashion where it can bleed into the mids. If a bass drum, you know, if it gets hit or a kick drum, it shelf cuts off. And so what happens is the bass sounds a little more impactful and uh, more realistic. Um, these dynamic drivers, man, the bass, the bass wasn't overwhelming, but it's really good, really solid. And I could feel the impact in my body. It felt almost like, uh, um, a, uh, like the, the drums are there. Like I was in the room with the artist, right? So it sounded really good. The, the mids vocals were excellent on these. I, I listened to a lot of vocal female vocal. I like, and Diana crawls one that I listened to a lot and, these sounded really good. You guys have to excuse me. I got a cold and my voice is kind of messed up. The thing about these that I really, really liked, or I was actually really surprised by, again with that innovation piece, is that dynamic drivers are, are I like IEMs with dynamic drivers. I When I see a hybrid, that's something I'm always more interested in because the dynamic driver can produce bass and low end mids much more realistically typically than a BA can, at least in my, in my experience. Um, the, the thing that you can't get from most dynamic drivers is that um, there's like a separation in certain instances of a song. So for instance, on a song that I like to use a lot, which is Alexis Cole, um, I think the song is Alone Together. Um, there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of hearts um, like where they hit the kick drum on the bass and they he hits the snare drum and he hits the cymbal at the same time. He, well, I don't know if it's a he, maybe it's a she. But anyway, the drummer, the the drummer hits the kick drum, the tom-tom or snare, and the uh, cymbal at the same moment. Now, with dynamic drivers, typically you'll hear that. You just won't hear it separated out really well. And you might think it's just a cymbal and a snare drum or just a snare drum and the kick drum. So you might not hear that kind of clarity and looking through the music, just hear all those instruments. I was, I was taken aback. You could say when I heard that on this, because I kept going back and replaying that one section because I heard very clearly all three of those um, instruments in the drummers uh, setup that he, struck at the same time I could hear them clearly separated and I I think that has to do with how they designed the driver in this and that driver can move very fast um, and it can get between those frequencies and pull them all out I mean that's the best way I can explain it I, I, I maybe another sound engineer could pop in and go no you're an idiot it's actually because of this but I, I don't know that that's what it seems like to me um, I used I built my own speakers in my house before so I know a little bit about speakers, not a lot. I'm not an expert on them, but um, I do understand how they operate. And um, that's why most home speakers have a tweeter and a mid-range and a, a, um, a woofer, because that's the only way you can get that separation. So when I can hear a dynamic driver, a single dynamic driver, no BA, do what I heard these do, I was really surprised. I mean... I would expect that on like the Monarchs and I, I hear that clearly in the Monarch, but that thing has multiple BAs and dynamic driver and an EST. I, I expected to be able to do that. A single dynamic driver to be able to produce that kind of sound was, was really shocking to me. Um, I, I really like these. If, if you haven't picked up on that, these are kind of my go-tos. I keep them, um, you know, at my bedside, I keep them during the day at my desk. I you'd listen to these a lot. I really, really enjoy this. The timbre on these is excellent. Um, they've got great detail without being harsh at all. I don't get any spikes or peaks. Everything just sounds uh, sounds good, um, but it's not clinical. It has a nice warm sound to it. So everything I listen to, I like. I listened to Beyonce album, Lemonade album on this. I really liked it. I listen to rock and roll on it. I really like it. I listen to Amy Winehouse uh, live, um, as well as the, her not live albums, and I, 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 you know, thought it sounded fantastic. Detail on everything was good. The cymbals and treble, excellent. I used. I listened to as far as detail. I used you know the typical songs I've used in some of my other videos to 
Dakar Al Pared from the Truth About Charlie album. Um, I used that Dark Side of the Moon, uh, Pink Floyd on the run. Um, I could clearly hear everything I can hear on some of the better IEMs I've listened to. So detail was very good, the detail retrieval. Separation, like I said, I could I could really hear the breakdown of instruments. There's a song I've been using lately a lot um, from the Yo-Yo Ma album. Um, well, I, I wouldn't say it's his album, but it's an album with him and some other artists that collaborated. It's called uh, Not Our First Goat Rodeo. Um, there's a song called Trappings on there, or The Trappings. And that song is really good for image testing um, and stage. And these have really good stage and image. Now, they don't have the same stage as the Monarchs, but the imaging is spot on for me. Um, and the stage was, wasn't was wasn't huge like the Monarch, but it was good. It was very good. It was as good as... It was better than the S8Zs. And it was better than the Tequilas. Um, and I'm trying to think of something I could compare it to stage-wise, but way better than the legacy holy smokes the legacies don't even compare to these please please don't even bring those up um these these were yeah definitely my new go-to's um i really like the sound quality in these it's gonna be hard for me to beat these uh now 300 319 it might seem like a lot for a dynamic driver um like this but you know these are so well made and I really like the innovation of their own driver in a case designed around the driver. Um, this cable with the swappable, you know, balanced or single ended. And it's a very nice cable, a very nice cable. In fact, if you guys have seen, or if you had like the Monarch or the, the Legacies, is it the Legacy? It might be the Legacy 5 actually. I don't think the 4, but the 5 um, by Lin Soul. Uh, it has a cable it feels just like this actually I, it's almost identical in that sense but this cable's stiff but pliable and um, really nice feel to it the case that it comes with the extra tips i mean it's the full package i think i think it really is worth the price they're asking for it i think if we went back four or five years three years yeah let's just say three years something like this would be a flagship iem it would be a 900 hundred dollar item for sure um the sound quality in this is as good or better than lots of IEMs I've listened to that are more expensive. So uh, I, these were so I I sold my Tans Gym Oxygens because these sounded better. Now I love the Tans Gym and the Tans Gym sound good. I'm not putting those down at all. Those are an excellent IEM. Those have great treble and separation. Um, they have a really good timbre. And really good mids. They're just the bass just wasn't there for me on those, even though I love listening to them. And you can go look at my video on that. I really enjoyed those. Those were a daily driver for me for a long time. But when I started going back and forth, because that's the first thing I did, was they're almost they're very close to the same price. The Tans Gyms, I think I paid like two eighty nine for those. So I put the Tans Gym. I was using the ADI DAC. I also used my FIO um, M eleven Pro for testing, and I was just popping one in and one out. In, in my ears so it was probably about you know 10 15 seconds between each one because you have to take it out of my ears put the other one in and then swap the jack so um in doing that what i found was that consistently the tans gym oxygen felt thin to me after listening to these the detail on these is good and the separation is good and the treble and everything but that bass on these really fills out the mids and and gives a nice thick sound to the music and you know the file fh3 that i reviewed i said it had it felt like there was a veil on everything just i could feel it and i didn't i just didn't like it i could sense that no veil these are very clear very dark background um but not analytical in any way at least not for me so very the clarity in these was excellent and and that's the thing so the tans gyms also had very excellent clarity the with you know no background noises right that shouldn't be there and i and i felt the same about these so with the tans gym and this the tans gym just felt thinner to me it didn't feel like it had the base that it needed to have to compete with these so these definitely won out over the tans gym for me um what else the, like i said the tequilas you know i love those tequilas and the base is very close but the tequilas have a little bit better treble i guess you'd say they have a a, a more um crispy treble but 
these also have a nice upper end that's very clear um, almost almost sparkly and but not quite but I enjoyed these better I like listening to these better there's something about the bass on these and the mids along with that really good treble and separation that I, I just I want to listen to all my music again and again and again on this that that's what I can tell you I really enjoy them so I, I won't ramble on too much longer I think these are worth their price and I, I really enjoyed these and I like I said I thought they were better than the Tans Gym uh, for my listening taste um, I thought they were slightly better than the tequilas for my listening taste. Um, and those are the two kind of in the same price range. You know, one's $399, one's $289. These are $300, but in that area. Um, and, and I really enjoyed these. So I hope this review helps you. Um, and, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions in the comments section. I I try to answer them and stay on top of that. I I typically stop looking at comments after a video comes out, but I will occasionally go back and, and do that. Um, but I appreciate all your comments and the questions that you guys ask. So uh, please keep that up. All right. Thanks. And again, I hope this helps you out.